ginseng, a multi-million dollar export for the state of Kentucky, this unique Appalachian treasure has been a part of a human civilization for thousands of years. Americans grow two million pounds per year, but cultivated ginseng isn't quite like the real deal. Wild Appalachian ginseng prices have been nearly $1,000 per pound when dried. Ginseng is the most revered medicinal plant in the world. My uncle even claims it makes him feel 16 again. 95% of all ginseng consumed in the world is in East Asia for the purposes of including strengthening internal organs, preventing headaches, fatigue, improving vision, mental capacity, and so on and so forth. In America, however, ginseng is commonly used in energy drinks, teas, supplements, etc. My name is Justin Prater and I've been digging ginseng for over 10 years and harvest season is something I look forward to each and every year. Sang hunting was handed down to me by my uncle Roger, cousin Darren, and other friends and family. During this short video, I'm going to show you a few tips and tricks I've learned over the years to find wild Appalachian ginseng. I would also like to use this opportunity to educate you on the importance of conservation and how this increasingly rare plant is becoming more difficult to find. You should always wait until September 1st to harvest, no matter what you've been told. I can assure you harvesting before the berries come out is not only illegal but is detrimental to the survival of this generation's old tradition in Appalachia. So enjoy a few tips from me and remember you can watch this video a thousand times but until you actually get out in the mountains you will never learn ginseng. So here we go. If you're looking for a good place to go I'm just shooting this video as I walk honestly so we'll we'll change things up as we go and and I'll give different different advice but my rule of thumb is the north facing side of the hill which is this one so the sun is right there it's about let's see what time it is four o'clock in the day so the sun rises over here sets over here so this side of the mountain really doesn't get a lot of sunlight ginseng does not like dry sunny conditions so you could really take a look at the trees around so you'll see a lot of poplars and then you can see some pawpaw trees and things like that and that's really the environment that ginseng likes to grow in. Um, typically, you don't find it when it's this dry, but I guess it's just where we've had a dry spell here recently. But you can look around and see, and this is what we call a holler. Uh, you can see how the mountain kind of goes around this way. So when I was walking up the hill, I purposely came to this little gully here in the mountain just so that I could walk this, you know. And, and the way I do it is I go back and forth, and that's another tip. So just go back and forth. I'll walk here, over there. I'll come back over here, over there. All the way to the top of the mountain so that you cover as much area that you possibly can. So I've walked, I would say easily a mile or more up this mountain. And just to give you an idea on how bad the poaching problem is, I've just found one three prong right here. It's ginseng, you can see the green stem, you can see the the stem here in the middle is already dying. The berries have already fallen off, so they're here somewhere or that or an animals ate them. And you can see, it's a distinct look. Once you see it, you'll, you'll never forget it. But there's poison ivy all around it. So usually a rule of thumb that I have is to just look around. I mean, think about it. The berries are gonna roll down the hill and sometimes you'll find ginseng all beneath this. So once I dig this, We'll go down there. We'll also go up because it, I mean, it could be above it as well. Um, up through there, these berries could have roll, rolled down the hill with the wind or rain or whatever, whatever have it. But this is poison ivy all around the ginseng. This is poison ivy. So if you're allergic to poison ivy, you have to be careful. Um, so back to the ginseng. So how to dig ginseng? Well, first I want to use this. This came from Royal King. You can get these for about 10 bucks or so. Just something really small and easy to carry through the hills. These are uh, really good because they're lightweight. So I'm gonna, I'm sorry I'm out of breath. It's, this mountain is straight up and down. So first thing I'm gonna do is kill the poison ivy here. Get that away from me. And the next thing is to just dig a, a circle around it. You don't wanna dig right on top of it. You wanna be very easy. So that you don't destroy the root. The ground's really dry. I'm surprised this ginseng is up this high. So I just want to dig around. You can start to see the root. Now if this had berries on it, you want to put the berries right back where you found them. 
don't listen to anyone else and take the berries back home with you put them right i mean if it'll grow here this year it'll grow here next year so make sure that you put it back another thing people do is they dig it out of season which i'll talk about a little more later guys if you dig it out of season the berries don't come out on this and it doesn't come back now granted there are sometimes the ginseng will grow i mean it'll grow in random spots due to animals dropping it and whatnot the berries but nine times out of ten if you dig it out of season it's not coming back so if you want it next year make sure you wait till season which in kentucky is the first week of september or the first weekend in september or september 1st whichever this year was a weekend so just keep that in mind so I dig the circle and you want to be sure to not put this in a plastic bag it will mold you have to be sure that you put this in a brown paper bag after you wash it so we're going to break it off right here some people keep this but if you're new to Jen's thing I would recommend this is another tip the first one you find like this one carry it around with you in the heels stare at it i mean even take just the plant not the berries home with you just so that you can look and get to know it that's actually one of the ways that i learned to do it so here's the root it's a small root but everything everything counts and this looks like it's several years old so we're going to put this in our pocket and we're going to move on so i just dug those two down there remember and i told you if you look up the hill in the vicinity you will find more most of the time so I walk up, here's a log, and I always like to look near logs because for some reason I find it around there. It's another tip. But here's another, this one's really lively. Um, here's another three prong. So this is good to harvest. It looks like the berries have already fallen off of this one too, you can see. So when you're looking for the berries, and I hope today I can find one with berries on it so that I can show you what it looks like. But, again, you can see the stem in the middle. So same thing as before. We are going to take our time and we're going to dig a circle around it. Uh, another tip I would tell you is pack a pistol or some gun, uh, any type of handgun, anything you can carry on your side. Um, because you never know what you'll see up here. A lot of rattlesnakes. Um, there are a lot of coyote. A lot, of, a lot of stuff up here i mean most i've been doing this for 10 years i've never had an animal bother me but it just makes me feel better to have protection if you will so i'm going to continue to skim this here and see if i can find any more after i found some down there so i walked up the hill a little more down there is where we originally dug the first two and then over there at the log was the next one so i have found one with one berry so you can see here this is a two prong with a red berry um you can see there's one berry left you can see other ones have rolled on down the hill again this to me for me anyway is too small to dig so i'm going to break this one off and i'm going to just let the berry lay there and i'm going to cover it with some leaves and then we'll come and dig this one again next year maybe when it's a three prong another tip i don't know how many tips this is going to add up to be don't get greedy i mean you saw when i broke off the two prong down there um what i did i mean i broke that off so the next year maybe it'll be large enough to finally harvest uh yeah just don't get greedy i mean and a lot of people are going to ask in the comments you know how much is the price of ginseng right now i've seen it as low as 300 400 per pound and that's dry weight all the way up to a thousand dollars a pound a couple years ago which is when i that's the most that I'd ever dug was that year. And um, I was able to pay a car almost all, completely off with the money that I got digging ginseng. But the problem here recently is the economy is so bad here in Appalachia that people were digging everything they see. They would dig that down there. They would dig everything around it. Some people will just, just dig a circle around it just to find a root that may or may not have come up. So, I mean, do not get greedy would be the best tip of all because again once it's gone it's gone it's not coming back this stuff doesn't just plant itself like people think so walk about another mile i would say or more across this way as you can see 
the stinger needles I told you about, they got me down there. So I was walking up and I was following this little trail. Um, and look what I found, another three prong. And I almost stepped over top of it. That just goes to show you how easy it is. Uh, it's how easy it is to pass up sometimes. But let's see how big the root is on this one. And again, I'm finding all this up high, which is unusual. I mean, most people dig down low. So you can take a look at it here. The berries have already fallen off again. And it's just early September. It's it's crazy that everything's already so dry. And it's because we've had a dry summer. So, this hill, I had to pull myself up. But it looks like a good spot. You can see all those fern looking things. Sometimes they're smaller ones, but called pointers. Um, not necessarily the bigger ones, but the smaller ones that you can see. Usually, that means this type of ground is is ripe for ginseng. Um, let's see. Let's look around here. Here is. Oh well, <laughs> right here in front of my face. There's a three prong. It's a three prong, and here is a dead three prong there is a three prong so we've got a pretty good little patch right here this is good uh well patch that you can harvest anyway i'm worn out still from walking up the hill but just goes to show you you it takes a lot of work you can't just stay on the stay on the trail you have to walk up the beaten path or get off the beaten path rather to find it so let's see what we got here let's get this one now i'll tell you one of my favorite things to do, and I'm falling down the hill just to show you how steep this is. I'll start with the bottom one and work my way up. So those look like smaller ones. So we're gonna clear this away here. And it's interesting, this is dead already. It's so rocky. So something else you'll notice um, when you're digging ginseng, and this video is getting way too long. But you see the sun is over the over the point there. So when you're out like this in the afternoon or well the late evening, it gets dark in the mountains very fast, um, a lot faster than it would you know if you were on the main top, obviously. So I always recommend. I mean, if you can go early in the morning and then stay out till about this time in the day, that's typically going to be better for you as far as seeing, anyways than going, you know, after you get off work or something like that. So it makes it really hard for working people to do this. But on weekends, it's nothing beats getting out in the mountains like this and looking around. Just watch out for big rattlesnakes, which I had stepped on up here before. As far as location, <laughs> this is one of the best looking spots. I mean, it doesn't really get much better than this as far as the environment goes anyway, but I mean, if someone came through here years ago and picked everything dry, then of course it's going to be difficult to find anything. But if you want a picture perfect where to find ginseng, in my opinion, this and then this little valley here, is, it's, it's a perfect spot for it. So it's day two and I'm back and here's a poplar tree. And here's a poplar tree and this is one I've been watching all year. So perfect example of the red berries and you can... I mean, you could spot this from a mile away with the red berries. So check that out. So, and if you look right around it, here's some small ones. That's a one prong. So that's over the years has fallen down and seeded. Uh, that's a one prong. We're not gonna touch those. There's another one prong. So this is a perfect example of what ginseng should look like. The red berries, three prong. This is perfect size for harvest. So there's another tip type of tree right here pretty sure it's a pawpaw tree but i always find it around that you can see here's a poplar it's a really good place it's just so dry i guess because we've had such a hot dry summer so just as i said near a pawpaw tree there's a very small two prong so we're going to break it off so nobody can dig that so it can have some time to grow 
And if you go on down the hill a little bit, we have a really good size three prong and the birds are already gone. The first small patch, there's one. Here's a dandy, really good size one with a red berry on it. That's a big three prong. Uh, let's see, there's another two prong. There's another three prong. And just as I told you all before, usually if you find one and you go up the hill, you'll find more. So I'm gonna bet that we can go up the hill here and find even more. So down there is the ones that we just now dug. And I told you earlier, if you look on up the hill, chances are you'll find more. So there's one that we passed up we didn't even see. Here's another one. Here's one there. There's probably 10 or 15 here. One, another one. Let's see, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. Uh, so this is a really good size patch. Over there's some more that I see. So we are, we've, we're in an area that looks like no one's been in a while. So this is pretty awesome. I'm not gonna record all this because you've seen me dig enough roots, but we're gonna be here a little while. There's another one. Still digging on this patch. There, look how much. This one's already dying. There's one. Here's a big pot of berries. There is a two good three prongs. Another three prong on the ground. Another good three prong here. Two prong there. And I've broken a lot of this off. So after digging at least 15 over there or more, I walked to the left just a few feet. And look here, how beautiful. Another three, another three. This one's dying. Another three, a two. We'll break those two off. There's a smaller two. There's a two. So, perfect environment, like I was saying yesterday, even though it was a slow day. Poplar trees, damp, shady areas like this. I'll probably come back here tomorrow. Uh, that's an old pond from a strip mine. So just to show you how close this stuff can grow and you would never know it was here unless you came out looking Another for it. Another tip, I'm on my phone today, I didn't bring my GoPro. Right now. Yeah, a really good looking blood root. And if you find this around, usually you're also in a perfect spot for ginseng. So I always think it looks like an elephant's ear even though it really probably doesn't. Uh, you know, this is blood root. And, if you, and the reason they call it that, if you dig it up, I guess I can dig one up right now and show you. really care because it's not worth much but you can see it's like a cut it in half but who cares there's it's not worth much but see how it's, how it's red this one we found all year that's a big old four well harley found it the stem on it or the berries. God. We're going to get hardly digging this big beast here. It's big as a pop out tree. Uh, look here, we got two old one prongs here. We're going to cover him up. Like it wires off again. Surely got it don't wire off again, does it? Break at it, got a smile. That got a smile too. There you go. <laughs> and I have, yeah, I have big hands and that. It's monstrous. That is a monster. Good right, job. Here's, right, here's the plane. Look at the stem. I'm telling you, you use that for a switch. Young <laughs> get out of line, wire them out. better haul today than yesterday and that was my dog uh, that's probably the biggest one that I found today and that's I mean that's as big as my hand that's a really good size one um, so yeah that's quite a bit that's another good one and it took me two hours today where this took me five hours so just, just as I said you just have to be patient so this is how I wash my ginseng. You gotta make sure that you have a 
cardboard box. You can't put it in plastic, it will mold. So this is what I found today and I'm gonna go back tomorrow and you'll see that in this video. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, which is not a lot, but it's better than nothing. I just do this until I get the dirt off of it. I don't care if it's perfectly clean, but you can take a toothbrush or something and clean it off that way. And just put it in the box and let it dry. It takes quite a while to dry. I always recommend putting it on top of a refrigerator or something. 